So guys, I was actually struggling for an idea for today's video. And as if by magic, like clockwork, I actually got a message via my Insta DMs about property and about property prices. And I thought this is perfect to make a video on. So I'm not gonna name the guy, but I'm gonna read through the DM that he sent me. And, and then we're gonna talk about it and then give you my thoughts. So it goes, bro, I was having a chat with a colleague. Do you think that property and letting are on the decline in the UK. You can no longer really get a bargain, no longer. And everything, everything in the UK is overpriced. The returns are not the best for development regarding all the effort and work that you have to put in. I personally blame the agents. Also, these new regulations are timely and expensive, can't really be a landlord anymore. The eviction process is horrible too. Now, there's a few things to unpack there, but a few sweeping statements were made, right? So he's saying you can't get a bargain. Everything is overpriced. You can't be a landlord anymore. Now, as a landlord with three properties between me and my wife in the UK, I beg to disagree. We bought all of our properties within the last three years. All of our properties are profitable. None of them have lost us money in those three years. If property is on the decline in the UK, if you can't be a landlord, if there's nothing out there, I certainly haven't got that memo, guys. So let's unpack some of the things that were said. So first of all, you can no longer really get a bargain. So I take the point, um, and I say it all the time on this channel, that property prices rise over the long term. Today, right now, as we speak, they're higher than they've ever been, and that tends to happen um, most years. Are you know a few dips or crashes in the market over the long term, property increases. But to say that you can't get a bargain, that's not true, guys. It's it's just not true. I mean, my last two properties, our last two properties, I negotiated bargains, discounts on both of them. On one of them, I negotiated five thousand pounds off, and the other one, I think it was seven and a half thousand pounds off. You can get a bargain, guys. It's down to how you negotiate and the leverage that you use. You know, I'll make other videos on that if you want me to, let me know. But to say that you can't get bargains anymore, it's not true. I take the point that especially now, right now, demand is higher. Check out my latest market update on March in the UK property market for that. Go through all of the stats and what's driving um, the high demand and the high prices in, in the market. So completely accept that as a point that, you know, properties are selling right now faster than they've ever been and prices are being pushed up. However, in and amongst that, you absolutely can secure bargains. It depends where you're looking. It depends how you negotiate. A lot of people, truth be told, are just scared to negotiate when it comes to properties. I remember my first time negotiating a discount on a property. I felt like I was completely out of line. I was like, you can't negotiate a discount on a property. This isn't a car. It's not a pair of jeans. This is a whole house. Um, but it's just not true, guys. You can negotiate discounts on anything, including properties. And I would encourage you to do so because when you negotiate discounts, that's built in equity from day one. So no bargains, everything being overrated. Disagree with that point. He also said that the returns are not the best. Again, it depends where you buy. If you buy in London, yes, the returns from a yield perspective aren't great. But right now, right now, if you buy in Liverpool, uh, Manchester, Sheffield, Leeds, Nottingham, returns are excellent. And also it depends on the strategy that you're using. So, you know, I said that generally speaking, yields in London are pretty low on standard buy to lets. But if you're doing a HMO or a serviced accommodation or commercial property, yields are great. OK, so again, blanket statement about returns not being good, not true. And then also it depends on the type of return that you're seeking. So the term return, as I use it from a banking perspective, as it relates to property, that includes yield, which is based on the rent you get, but also capital appreciation, which is based on the rise in the value of property. So it depends on which of those two, or whether it's both of them that you're pursuing. And it also depends on the strategy. You can supercharge, you can add steroids to especially the rental yield, by using a different strategy on a property, okay? And a point around all these new regulations are timely and expensive. I didn't go into the detail, so I'm not quite sure what he means there. But yes, it does seem like over the last five to 10 years, regulations have penalized landlords more than they have um, tenants, certainly, when you look at the relief that you can get on interest. That's a big reason why you've seen so many landlords, including myself, 
choose to pursue buying property via limited companies for tax reasons, especially if you're a higher rate taxpayer. So yes, regulations are quite or have been quite punitive to landlords. But again, there's ways around it depending on how you structure your property buying and the strategy you use. As I said, I am profitable and I plan to get more and more properties over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. It's not dead, guys. And then lastly, he mentioned that the eviction process is terrible too. Yeah, I agree. The rules in the UK have changed so that it's making it harder to evict a tenant. But again, there's ways around that that you can mitigate that risk. You have to screen your tenants well first. So if you're bringing somebody into your flat, your house that you've worked and bought with your hard-earned money and you haven't screened them properly, you haven't made sure that they're in a job where they can afford, you know, two or three times a monthly rent, that they have good references from their last landlord, that they're working full time, that they're employed, etc. You can do a lot to minimize the chances of you having to evict a tenant and having a tenant who's not paying their rent, guys. So again, a lot of ways around it. If you're encountering, you're hearing these kinds of narratives that property is dead, it's too hard. I mean, I love it because that means there's less landlords, less people going into property, and there's more deals available for me. Um, but don't believe it at face value, guys. Do your own research. Look at the numbers. Look at the data. And I think you'll find that property is far from dead. See you soon.